begin. And excellent. Welcome everyone to our, I think it's going to be our last class today because I received a note um, earlier this week from the president's office. They are having an event in uh, the global classroom on um, next um, Saturday, or I think even Friday night. And they would like to come in a little bit earlier to set things up. So I said, yes, which means it will be easier for them to just set up for that big event and for uh, us to cancel the in-person class. But I can still be online from home if you need or if you would like to discuss anything, because in theory, that is our 14th class and you're supposed to have it. So that will be how we will do it. Or I may be here on campus for one reason or another, and I can always just sit in the atrium and connect with you that way. But we're super flexible in here. That's the idea. And so what we, are, what we can do today is um, uh, talk about um, anything you want to talk about in terms of the recorded talks that I posted. Okay, And if you need, I can do a little summary of um, a greater world, freedom's power, humanity's stain, the 20th century, and talk about the big ideas in those. But um, the recorded talks are there for you. The content is there. And I'm hoping that you're familiarizing yourself with those recorded talks and that I will see some of the ideas from those in your final assignment. That's integration of course material. Other than that, I would like uh, Mayreen um, to be able to update on Expo um, and also for Sarah, uh, if she uh, would like to come and uh, tell us a little bit more about the Global Class Alliance and the club or um, a growing initiative that she is um, heading up uh, with Mayreen. And all of this is uh, because we are beginning to grow this new classroom for humanity that we are going to present um, at the World Expo in 2025. And I'm feeling more and more confident that we're going to be able to say to a lot of people in the world, we're talking about <laughs> the most historical, um, maybe prestigious showcase of um, thinking about the future and humanity's problems and how to solve them. Um, that is the World Expo, and it originally was called the World's Fair in the um, 19th century. And if some of you would like to learn more about this, um, I highly recommend that you um, do a little bit more digging on Nikola Tesla. And I suspect every single one of you know who Nikola Tesla is. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he presented um, his new ideas around electrification and wireless technology for humanity at the World's Fair um, in the 1880s, I think it was, or 90s. Um, and as Mayreen has um, helped me to see um, through some of the research that she had to do when she was a guide at the last World Expo um, in um, United Arab Emirates, there are a lot of things that have happened in terms of interesting tech over the decades at World Expo. And it's held every five years, not every four years, every five years. So when people come together, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. There'll be, you know, a lot, lot of countries there. So we are um, uh, gradually, organically, from a grassroots, building out of this campus, this amazing hybrid campus, which is a college and a university with all of these inter kind of connected pathways of education. There's so much that we are able to say, but ultimately we will be able to say that, that we have um, a, um, we, we will be able now to provide access to high quality, flexible education to all people on earth for free. That's what we're doing here. And I just, can't tell you how thrilled I am to have students like all of you, and particularly the motivated students who, who want this, who want this kind of format, and most importantly, who want to develop a new mind. I'm not saying 
that we replace the old mind. I simply mean that when Jacob Bronowski said to us um, in the uh, latter part of the 20th century that humanity needs a new mind to deal with this new planetary reality, he is someone I profoundly respect among the many giants um, that I've talked about um, in this class. And I might even talk about Alan Bloom today as well in the closing of the American mind. But there is so much despair today, so much dystopian thinking about the future, so much darkness when it comes to thinking about where we are going, and so much pessimism around the fact that humanity seems unable to solve its intractable problems, even though technology and science just race ahead. And I'm proud, super proud, after you know 15 years of teaching here and growing this, that we're now at a position where I think we're going to take off. And we're going to hit that sort of inflection point, um, and which is what futurologists often talk about. You incubate a new idea for you know, 10, 15 years, and then things happen. Something happens, and the inflection point is hit, and then the S-curve starts, and you start racing up that. And then you hit the other inflection point, and you become fully established, uninstitutioned, permanent. And so we will have the format, technically, to say to every young person, every person on the planet, you can access education here for free in a very sophisticated environment. And most importantly, it's all about planet-wide thinking. So it may be that some of you will eventually teach here in this classroom to others around the world. But it really is a, a very exciting time. And, and I'm hopeful and excited about doing something with all of you that is good and positive. <laughs> Not, you know, filled with so much conflict and difficulty and suffering. There's too much of that. Anyways, so today what I'd like to do is um, make sure that um, Maureen can give you a little bit more of an update of where things are. And why don't you come and, you know, and then Sarah as well. Uh, and if there's anybody else who would like to um, talk about um, particularly your final assignment. I'm behind with the marking, okay? I apologize for that, um, but uh, I'm not too concerned about the students who are here. Uh, Stephen, as well, um, is going to do very well in this course, too, so don't worry too much about your marks right now. However, please worry about doing a great final assignment that you're proud of. Students in this space have won awards for the work that they've done. I am absolutely confident that if you bear down, concentrate, and care about this final assignment that's worth 35%, you will not only do really well in this course, but you're going to walk away proud. That's what we do in classrooms, is we build pride, right? So no, no lecture today. Just to have a chat, make sure you you can talk about anything you need to talk about, any questions, and then we'll end. All right? So I'll let Maureen um, give a little bit of an update, and then Sarah can come, and then we'll carry on. All right? So please go ahead. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so a little update for the World Expo is as of tomorrow, April the 13th, 2024, we're going to hit one year until Expo 2025 in Japan. It's going to start April 13, 2025. So um, we're, Lon and I are planning to attend an event. And yeah. I don't know if anyone else would like to, but uh, they're having a, a little celebration or a little event um, in Japan. And um, it's going to, for, for English speakers, it's going to be on Zoom. Uh, so there is a link that I can share. But um, it's unfortunately, because of the time difference, because we live in, in the world uh, and there's time right. zones, it's, it's going to be midnight. Yeah. Unfortunately, but if anyone wants to like take a quick nap or I don't know what to be able to wake up for it, like 12 30, 1 a.m., um, that's when it's happening. 
Uh, so tomorrow, April the 13th. And then, um, yeah, they've been un unveiling uh, different pictures of like architecture progress of the expo site. So if you wanted to follow the, uh, the channel or the account on Instagram, that's where I'm getting updates from. Um, but yes, so uh, that's, I guess, so far updates for the World Expo. I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow night, every Saturday night pretty well is I usually try to watch Saturday Night, Light, Saturday night Live. I've been doing that for many years. And you know, Saturday Night Live is maybe the longest running show on television. Ever. Yeah. 45 years, I think it is. I think Nature of Things, maybe. Nature of Things is the longest running science program on television. But yeah, it's... Uh, and did you know Saturday Night Live is created by somebody from Toronto, Lorne Michaels, great producer. Yeah, um, and I used to go and and um, watch one of his uh, early protégés, Jim Carrey, when Jim Carrey used to perform at Yuck Yucks in Toronto way back when. In fact, I even did a little documentary on Jim Carrey for CBC way back when. But uh, anyway, so Saturday Night Live hopefully will be funny, and I'll laugh. It's not very funny these days, but and then I'm going to jump on that Zoom call and. Maybe my wife might join us. John? Coronation Street, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, it's going to be history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Coronation Street's been going on for, let's see, 62 years now, since 1960. Okay. That's right. And, and then what's coming after Coronation Street? After? Um, well, Doctor Who has been going on for 60 years. <laughs> was there? Was there? Oh, yeah. That's I revived it in 2005. That's right. That's, did it? That's, that doesn't count. So it looks like the longest running continuous, show ever. Longest is, running continuous show. So Cornish, Saturday Night Live is right up there. It should be. Um, and. Anyway, um, so find it on this list. Well, maybe the source is not so good, but <laughs> that's you know who knows these days. Um, I can only tell you that it has been on the air for that long, and maybe I'm not quite correct. I'm not sure. Okay, so anything else on uh, tomorrow night, or uh, yeah, do you want to put? Um, do you want to write the information up on the notes and and make sure, and we'll post things yeah great and then uh, other updates would be the gca the global cross alliance which yeah well sarah could, why doesn't sarah come up and talk about that uh, please stay because the two of you are both very involved please please uh, go ahead sarah all right so um i hopefully you guys remember uh, it was a couple weeks ago that uh, marine came in and was talking about starting up a club about this class um, so we've got that started. We've got a uh, we've got a Discord uh, server set up. Uh, so far, that's pretty much all we've got going uh, right now, just because we're at the end of the semester, right? Um, but the the idea is that um, it's the the club is open to to anyone. You don't have to be part of one of the classes in here, right? So. Anyone who's curious about the global class or anyone who's just interested in expanding their mind to think on a more global or humanity scale, um, you know, uh, that that's, you know, this club is, is, uh, is for that. Um, so we've got a section in the Discord for um, a short history of the world. We've got a section for um, global leaders and a section for uh, humanity's destiny. Uh, which are the three classes that Juan teaches in here. Um, and it's basically, you know, the past, present, and future of humanity. Uh, and so the idea is on the Discord server, you know how we've got all our discussions in class, and then at the end, we never have time to finish the discussion because we run out of time. So this is a place where we can just keep the discussion going forever, right? Uh, and just, you know, talk about stuff we were talking about in class, but also sort of morph into other things that are relevant to it, talk about current events, talk about things like the global, uh, the mm -hmm. World Expo. Um, and uh, we're gonna have another section in there specifically talking about how we can uh, try to use technology to 
promote education worldwide, like what we're planning to do with this classroom. It's great. And so forward looking and brave and interesting and dealing with all the forces from evolution, you know, science, technology, religion. How about gender? Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Nature of Things has an episode on this week with some very interesting science on gender. And let's just say that, you know, um, the, the, the journey that you have taken, Sarah, and what you represent is incredibly brave and also needs to be understood more by everybody. And so who knows? There might be a class that we might do later around gender, you know, and that you might teach possibly, but we could talk about that. I'm just introducing this to Sarah now. I've never talked about it. I hope I'm not, um, you know, putting anything on your shoulders. I shouldn't. Yeah, I know that know? we do have a, a gender and sexuality um, gen ed course at the, at the school. Um, <laughs> that's probably talking at least somewhat about uh, trans issues. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, that's that's the thing about the club is that all of these topics are fair game. Yeah. And if there's a particular topic that's not necessarily related to one of the classes, but just like a big topic that pertains to humanity, uh, you know, we'll create another channel and have like a full discussion just on that. Right. Uh, if anybody in here uh, is interested in joining the Discord server, um, I've got a flyer printed up. It's over on the uh, the table over there, the box. Uh, and so it's got a QR code. You can actually we don't we can just put it right down here. Right here. Yeah. There's a QR code. If you scan that with your phone, then it'll bring you to the Discord invite, right? So if you've got Discord on your phone, you can just scan that and join the server right away. That's right. Great. And then I guess we'll probably have the QR code or the link or something like that posted yes. for the rest of the class who's not here in person. Also, there are posters uh, put up a few places around the school, uh, so you might see them uh, there. You know, um, we are brave in the sense that we talk about everything, and we're not afraid of any kind of conflicts and difficulties because there's a thing called the common good. So, for example, Mr. Bag, Stephen, are you there? Yes. Good. Maybe Stephen would come in and teach a little bit on the beauty. Is <laughs> great. Okay, there is. Okay, but I want to say that, for for example, um, I want all of you to talk. I don't want to talk too much. But let me just say that um, it may not be so apparent how much I do respect somebody like Stephen, even though it's obvious that we probably have different ways of looking at things. But religion is a hugely powerful force in the human story, as you've seen, and it's not going away. <laughs> I mean, look, religion, okay, very important. Um, <laughs> and so we need to understand the beauty and the um, significance and the sacredness of it. And um, always, there will be huge space in the global classroom for students to talk to others about their religious experiences um, in a way where we can understand why we might say that God's grace is, is, is necessary for us all. But I don't mean that quite in the religious. Arnold Toynbee said that, one of the great world historians of the 20th century, I did quote him. Um, in um, uh, the class on um, uh, awakenings of power, uh, that human nature without God's grace is not enough. So maybe people like Stephen, Mayreen, uh, others can help us to understand this thing called God's grace in their lives. And is that fair, Stephen, to say that maybe that could be something you could join our discussions on? What, in the Discord? Discord, or even come in in person into a global class and be a guest, or even help teach a little bit and explain to others in different countries and be prepared to be challenged as you have been in this class. 
What do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, thanks. So, great, Mayreen. Good. So, let's... Um, uh, well, if you, you want to go to the board and we'll take some notes uh, and um, we'll bring some other students up. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Uh, let's see um, who uh, could take a seat. J just, no, Met, Meet. It's Meet. Yeah, Meet. Why don't you come and sit oh, here a little bit up here? No? Okay. Well, we'll wait. We'll wait. John, I know John can always come up. So, John, go grab a seat. And uh, Nico, why don't you grab a seat? Okay. And. Um, so, do you have any questions about the final assignment or about, more importantly, the story around the recorded lectures of, you know, A Greater World, uh, um, The Conquest, Freedom's Power, Humanity's Stain, the 20th Century? There's so much content I wasn't able to give in lectures this semester, so it's just the way it's gone. So it's all there in recorded lectures, but do you have any questions around that particular content that's been posted? Um, I guess what I would say is um, the 20th century, yeah. I guess, I haven't seen it, but I guess, does it talk a lot about modernization in a way? It talks about how we're going into, how we you know, maybe are now in a modern world, even though we've said goodbye to the 20th century, obviously, but Yes. Um, yeah, no, that, that sounds good then. Well, I can explain a little bit about why the 20th century is so significant. Sure. Why I've spent a whole um, talk and class on it. From the period of 1800 to 2000, so the beginning of the 19th century to the end of the 20th century, 200-year period, the world's population went from 1 billion to 8 billion, which is... Extraordinary in that 200 year period, 1 billion to 8 billion. And at the beginning of the 20th century, I believe the population was about two and a half to 3 billion. That the largest increase in global population by far happened in a 100 year period in the 20th century. It's not just the population though. It's the growth of science and technology. And just to give you one tiny, tiny example, okay, this speaks to so many things. I can give you two. First of all, Albert Einstein's, um, you know, miraculous, <laughs> miraculous year when he uh, wrote four of his most important papers that redefined uh, gravity, helped us understand the curvature of space time, um, revised um, Isaac Newton's theories. You know, he, he also helped us understand the speed of light. He, he wrote four of his papers, critical papers, in his 20s, in one year, the beginning of the 20th century. Then, I think what's re more remarkable about it, I mean, there's so many things, but the discovery of the electron happened at the beginning of the 20th century. J.J. Thompson, the British physicist who won the Nobel Prize, discovered the electron, and he won the Nobel Prize in the early part of the 20th century. The electron is our world. Let's, let's, let's be clear about something. It may not be so apparent, but all of modern, the modern world is built on the understanding of electricity, the electrical current that drives all of our technology. Well, what's in an electrical current? What's, what's going through that current? It's just flowing electrons, flowing electrons going all the way around in all of our machines, all of our systems, all of our digital technology, microprocessors, computers, everything. And the electron was there pretty well at the Big Bang. It is a subatomic particle, just like protons and neutrons. And we figured that out. And at least we began to understand it, and we didn't, we didn't see it. J.J. Thompson didn't see it. He saw the tail of it. It goes so fast, it's like a bumblebee inside the nucleus. It's just zipping all over the place. That The nucleus, the proton and the neutron, they're together, but the electron is flying all over the place inside the nucleus of every cell, of everything. And J.J. Thompson 
figured that out, and then gradually we began to develop so many new technologies. So, you know, um, John, I could I could go on, um, but then what happens is in the 20th century we we come into this thing called the Promethean Age. Some call it the Promethean Age. Some historians, Prometheus was a kind of a Greek demigod um, in Greek mythology who it is said stole the fire from Zeus, the, the, the chief Greek god. And for that, for taking the fire from Zeus and giving it to humans, he was eternally punished. The story goes that he was um, chained to a cliff for eternity and that um, his um, uh, every uh, uh, day a a bird, I forget the bird, a, a crow or a raven will come and pick away at his chest, open up his chest. And then at night, it would close. And then the raven would come back the next day and open up. In other words, he's being condemned for eternity for having stolen the power from Zeus and giving it to humans. Now, historians say, um, we entered the Promethean age in the 20th century because with the power of science and technology, humans gave themselves new powers that culminated in, of course, the atom bomb. Oppenheimer. I mean, exactly, gonna, Oppenheimer. Gonna Oppenheimer. And Oppenheimer is so important. So essentially what we're talking about, John, is that we entered a time in terms of the very big picture, where humanity now has weapons of such mass destruction that we can kill everything. It's not genocide, omnicide. That's the worry. Omnicide. The killing of all life. Oh, and, and if you... Uh, I'll stop. Okay, go ahead. Um... <laughs> um all right, so yeah, you just went through a few points on the like the twentieth century and what kind of eras we went through um, in those a hundred years. But I think it's especially important to ask, like as we're reaching the one quarter mark of the twenty first century already. Yes. What do you think have been some of the most important things that have happened there? It's a really good question. In this century, because a lot of uh, good and important things happened in the 20th century. Too. Since 2000, roughly. But we are now in the 2000s, and you were probably born right at the end of the, were you even? 2004. Wow, so you are a true, true millennial in that sense. Um, wow, so to you then, the 20th century is, is old. Is, is it really old? Like, it, how does that? Definitely before my time, so it is old. <laughs> so the question would be, what's important in the 21st century? Like, you know, you mentioned a lot of important developments in the 20th century, and now the same, I'm asking the same question about the 21st. Well, maybe I'll just start by something really relevant. And then we can talk about bigger things. Look at what we're doing right now. I, I think, well, it's not just technology. Here we are. We have online right now a, 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 a religiously devout Catholic. Um, I am a... Jew, but it's I'm a secular, very secular Jew, and and I'm a human first. I'm not a chosen person. We're all chosen, okay? We all are. Now, the Muslim over there, and and here's a person who's um, uh, decided that uh, what nature has supposedly given her is not the right thing because she feels differently. And we're all having, we're all able with this diversity. And I'm not even talking about all the people we bring in from around the world. We're all able with this diversity to talk. No guns. No weapons here. There's a sense of a common good. A 
common good. Then on top of that, look at the technology. Half a million dollar video wall here, live on YouTube, live streaming all over the world. You know, this is to me, from my standpoint, significant progress for humans to be able to interact and use technology well. But beyond that, let's remember that, um, you know, we have serious problems in the world in terms of climate, for example. But I would just say one thing. Look at the ozone layer. This was, this was dealt with at the end of the 20th century successfully. We closed or began to close the ozone layer so that humanity would not be burned by the sun. It was an issue not as serious as climate change, but, but something like it. I, I'm, I, I'm confident that, that, that humans can solve big problems when they're brave enough to stand up to them. I think we can at least, you know, mitigate the event, the effects of climate change. I mean, we've already kind of, the reports I read were a long time back, but we've already kind of avoided like the absolute like worst case scenarios of warming of up to like five and a half degrees or something like that. So yes. we've, we've avo I think we've avoided that. So I think, you know, I'm not so sure how we're going to fare in, in our fight to get under 1.5 or under two, whatever the goal is from the Paris Agreement. But I think we're going to do pretty well if we just keep working at it. And if countries keep doing, they keep coming together, they keep having, you know, leaders that might deal with it and all that kind of stuff. We have to care. Any, any questions about uh, anything regarding the content so far, the final assignment, anything you'd like to address that, that you think is really important as we as we sort of come to the conclusion of um, a kind of an intellectual journey that we've been on together this semester. Well, I think I was going to ask something about the final assignment. <laughs> go, go ahead. Um, so like my, my whole course is, has been mainly about like recording because I'm in broadcasting, right? Yeah. And I mainly like the whole year, like this, is, this class is kind of the only like writing I've ever done in this semester. Like other than script writing, yes, yes, but not sure. like anything like that. So for mine, I was I don't know wondering if it's I have time. Obviously, um, yes, I could put the your skills, and I could make like a documentary on, on, the, on the class. I would highly or, encourage you to, or like maybe some of the topics or anything like that. Do um, you have enough time? It's due next Tuesday. Have, have sure. you received an extension this semester? Never. I've actually never okay, asked so you for an extension. Your, you, you're owed an extension. <laughs> OK, yeah, all right. I, I had a student in many years ago who she came to me at the end of a semester and said, I really, really have this great idea for a final assignment, but I need an extension. And I, I said, well, I'm not so sure. but." Tell me what it is. And she told me, and it grew into a terrific video that won the Trent University Film Festival contest called Rice and Water. Uh, and so all I care about is students really being able to see what they're capable of if they have the time. Um, and I'm afraid it does take time to do things well. And we all are short on time. So if I can give you a little more time to do that, then uh, I know that you as a person are going to grow. Mm -hmm. And I will have done my job as a teacher. And since you haven't had an extension at all this semester, you, you can have it. So I will we'll certainly try to, like, if it falls out, then I would probably do something with writing. Okay. Um, but another thing I was going to ask, this is not about the final assignment. It's actually quite different. It's, yes. I think this is actually a question from, I think this is when uh, we used to, well, I was actually in the Humanities Destiny class last semester. It was uh, like a question like you never answered us. What was that? Well, like you, for like maybe two weeks, we were trying to, we were coming up with like, Oh, the, who is the next big thing that's going to happen? And for like two weeks, 
I didn't answer every, it. Every, no, everyone was uh, having all different opinions. Yeah. Um, and you never gave what you thought or said the answer. So I'm going to ask, now that I have the chance, because I'd be very curious, what do you think is the next big thing that's going to happen? Okay, I, I, sh I had a note and I um, probably it just dropped off my list. It was not a conscious avoiding, it just got no, no. fell off. But I'm going to answer it now. Okay, and then Stephen will come to your question, I see in the live chat. Uh, there's no question that um, the next big thing has to come from the human heart and the human soul not from a machine. Now, to answer the question, I could try and talk about where in technology and science it might come from, because that's generally what we do when we talk about next big things today. We talk about the next big machine, the next big discovery in science that will change our reality. But I'm going to tell you something that comes from my heart too because I think that's all that I can do when you ask me that question. Mm. I um, have been teaching for uh, quite a few years now and particularly history and um, I'm kind of tired of talking about great things in history. I'm kind of tired of talking about what others do. I'd like to be somebody who shapes history. And I think we all have that ability to do that if we really focus on something and work hard at it. We can shape the future. It's not somebody else. It's not other people around us that we wait for the next big things. It can be us. And so I would like to be part of that. I would like to be part of a next big thing in education. That's number one. That's, that's number one. Um, number two, in terms of where it's likely to come from, I think we already know that it's, it's moving in the direction of artificial intelligence. And I'm not sure what the device will be, um, what the, um, the microchip in the head, but it, it's, it's something because the, the uh, relationship between the human and the machine um, has, has developed so much now that, that our machines are central to our future. And so it's the question of what is going to be that next machine that is going to be doing things for humans that will be giving us something new, some kind of power. I'm not sure what, but it does seem like it's going to be an AI. Now, maybe it will come in the form of something more spiritual, something more moral. It, it was said by historians at the beginning of the 20th century, particularly those that lived through two world wars. The worst conflicts in human history happened in the 20th century with World War I and World War II, with the first weapons of great mass destruction. And it was said that humanity needs a moral revolution, a spiritual revolution that matches the growth of its machines. And we haven't had that yet. And so maybe we will get something, Nico, where as a result of this continuing war, conflicts, suffering, we will see some new way of looking at each other First, as humans, and then second, as part of our tribes, whether our tribes are Canadian tribe, um, the, the, the tribe that wears hats with S's or blue jays on them, the, the, the Jewish tribe, the Muslim tribe, the, you know, the Indian tribe, the whatever tribe. Those are communities. They can become factions, and they can become very angry and violent. We have to remember there's a common good. And maybe the next big thing will be, will, will be a reawakening to the common good. Or something like that. 
I don't know what it is, Nico, but, but if we don't do something, we're, we're going to cause a, a lot greater suffering in the world with very powerful weapons that can cause so much death so quickly. And we're seeing that now in Ukraine, and we're seeing it in the Middle East. Um, and I do not like the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu at all. I've had trouble with him for a long time. So I will say this only, that the scale of destruction that we are seeing in the Middle East right now, in Gaza, and um, is, has, it, it is so fast. The, the level and speed of destruction has been so fast. Uh, and it stems from a terrible attack on Israel on October the 7th. But we must look at this now and stop this. The scale of destruction. And if that, that we have to stop. I want to make sure that that never continues. So common good, something spiritual, AI, education. Where do you think it should come from? Uh, I prefer spiritual. And what kind of spiritual development does humanity need? And, and we'll come to Stephen in a second, okay? Stephen, get ready to deal with this. What kind of spiritual step may we have to take? <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that, I won't lie, but... Is, I'm just saying that with them. Yeah. That's a gut feeling. Um, well, there's a completely other thing I wanted to talk about. That's within the whole like spiritual thing. Yeah, it's like throughout the course, you know how like you've labeled Stephen as like the big religious guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm also a pretty big religious person. Um, oh, yeah. But which one? I'm Greek Orthodox. Well, now, I love surprises. Okay. So, uh, please continue. Oh, well, um, I'm just saying that because, like, uh, like, like, a lot of times when you talk about, uh, like, the whole science versus God thing yes, or whatever, yeah. I just stay quiet just because I want to listen. Like, and, I, and, like, there's been a lot of times where in my head I have disagreed. Like uh, with how uh, what the world started, yes, yes, the the whole star thing. Like I said, a lot of like stuff in my head was like, "Oh, how did it get there? How did just how did everything get there yeah. originally?" Because in my head, like one of the biggest reasons I believe in God, one is my Godfather, two, yes, uh, you can't tell me that like. Like, nothing had to have started from something, if that makes sense. Nothing comes out of nothing. There has to be something. There, there has, has to, to be, be something, something to a start. There has to be something there. It just doesn't come out of nothing. Okay? And, like, I think, like, all, like, of this, like, uh, whole evolution and that whole, um, I don't know what you, what was it again? The, the big star? Like, uh, the... the is it the Big Bang or, yeah, the, or big, yeah, big big bang. Bang. Yeah, the Big, big bang. bang? Yeah, the Big Bang. Okay, when we, we begin the emergence of subatomic particles, it's the, yeah. it's the coming of those that then start to clump together into atoms. Atoms begin to form matter, and we start to see. Yeah, and like uh, all human evolution and how we got here now, I personally like feel like that's God's plan. Like, I don't think it's Him like manually doing this. Like, like what putting this here, this there. Like, I think it was just like already pre a pre-made plan that like he already set up and this it's playing out in front of us. Like, sure, that's, sure. that's, that's, that's what I say. I mean, and over the years I became like more religious and I'm like, in fact, like maybe five years ago, I didn't think, I didn't believe in God at all. But. I love the fact that you're sitting here and you're sharing this with well, I was going to share it one day, and since it's the last one, I was like, you know, I might as well just share. This is meaningful education, and I think we need to bring Stephen in because he's he's starting to.
fire up on the live chat, so I can, I can feel them chomping there. Stephen, please jump in, and uh, you had a question, but you've, did you hear what Nico said? About what? Did you hear what Nico said? Uh, now, can you repeat what you said? Okay, okay. Please listen. Okay, you were you were writing right in the live chat. You're gonna have to say it over. Here. I want you to hear what Nico has to say. Are you listening? Yes. Excellent. I'll just re ahead, I'll just I'll just pretend like I'm like redoing the whole thing and talking to you. So like basically this whole time I like how you've labeled Stephen as like all oh, the really big religious guy. Like yeah. I've also been a pretty religious person throughout like especially like over the course of the last few years I became yes, more religious. Yeah. You're orthodox, as you said. That's, yeah. that's what you're you you're feeling more strongly about as you yeah. get older. But I, I also my dad also like is in Buddhism. So but um Basically, like, uh, and throughout the course, like, uh, in my head, like, I've disagreed about a lot of stuff, and the Big Bang is one thing, like, and this whole, like, how the human evolution, the, how the Big Bang happened, and how we all got here till now, like, I personally believe that that is, like, God's plan, like, like, he planned, like, it's playing out in front of our very eyes, and, like, what's the word? It's... It's a design. It's a design yeah. of of one supreme, all knowing, all seeing something. Yeah. That uh, can I ask you a question about this? Yep. Just to see, and then well, I'm going to wait for for Stephen to come in because, like, it, and then we can we can talk. Okay. I don't have like. Like, I'm not, like, a huge, I'm not a know-it-all. Like, there's still a lot I have to learn. Oh, I know. Like, I'm just saying that this is just, like, personally what I believe in and what I felt. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Stephen, please jump in and, and ask what you wanted to ask and say what you want to say, but I wanted you to hear clearly what Stephen had to say. And please go ahead. Yeah, so my question was going to be, uh, like, what should we write about for the final, uh, like, reflection? Well, did you read the assignment sheet? Have you seen it? I'm going to take that as a no. Silence. No, no, I'm, we're listening to the voice up here. Stephen. Stephen, I'm going to assume that you have not seen the assignment sheet. Is that correct? What what happened to Stephen? Where is he? Okay, maybe Stephen. He's, maybe he's lagging. Okay, something could be lagging. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Stephen, have you seen the assignment sheet on DC Connect? To be honest, I didn't, I didn't know there was one. Okay, so this is step number one. This is a problem. Okay, uh, first I'm going to guide you to it right now. And you should have. You're not the only one who said this. I just had a student come to me um, just at the beginning of the class. But, y you know, it was posted on DC Connect 10 days ago, two weeks, three. I, it's all there. So I'm a little annoyed, but I'm not going to let that get in the way. This is something you should not be asking. You should know this. So let's go to the assignment sheet. Okay? DC Connect. Go to the home page of DC Connect. Open up another tab. Go to the home page and take a look at either the announcement that says Reflection 4 or in your calendar, Reflection 4 with the due date, with the student examples, with the assignment sheet. Everything is there. I need you to look at that, okay? Please do that right now. And when you're there, tell me you're there. And then I'll answer your question. I don't see the announcement. Scroll down. You will see reflection four, final assignment. I'll put it up here on the board, okay? 
let's make sure everybody's. That's why I have the class today, you know. To, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Okay, let me open up a tab, a new tab, and uh, I'll bring it uh, here. Oh, okay, I got it now. You got it now? Okay, great. So I'll, I'll now. Can you do me a favor, just so I know that you're really understanding? Could you open up the assignment sheet and start reading it out loud to all of us? Then I know. I know you're capable of doing really good work, Stephen. You're thoughtful, but probably you're overwhelmed with a lot of things. And probably this thing is not that important to you. It needs to be really important now. So read it out loud to all of us. Assignment sheet. Reflection four. Grade. Term value, 35%. What's the quote at the top that says, I have I've come, come to realize the importance of what it means to be human. Beautiful. Keep reading, please. You want me to read like the paragraph? Just go read it out loud. When we explore the world's history, we see the story of a planet where life emerged in organisms and animals and plants took shape and where we humans, the most advanced of all living things, spread across the face of the earth, building cities and empires and powerful transformative machines. Keep going. Re please read it out loud. Okay. Are you there? Okay, I won't push it anymore. Okay, so once you're familiar with that, Stephen, and you've gone through it, then if you still need to ask me the question, go ahead and ask it, but I don't think you will need to anymore. We don't have to have a long class today. There's no reason for us to be here if we don't need to be here. So. It all matters if it matters to you. In other words, if there are things you need to know, I'll be here. And I'm so glad, once again, that Stephen has answered honestly. And he said no. So I've learned he didn't read the assignment sheet. He's not alone. That really concerns me. <laughs> We're talking about 35% of your grade, and it's been posted for this long. So... Do any of you have any other question? Anything you'd like to say? John, yeah, come on, come come sit here, okay? And I'll I'll sit in your seat. Take the microphone. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I, we're only oh, that's because we started late, yeah. So we're gonna end shortly. we very shortly, okay? John, um, go ahead. Do you want the focus of the final written like essay, if you will, reflection four, to be about only one of the lectures, or can we integrate multiple? Multiple. The idea is not that you're writing about the lectures now. You're simply thinking about one thing from the whole course this semester, that you're going to explain why you've chosen that topic, and then you're going to explain why it matters to humanity with research. So in the three reflections you did so far, you were talking more, kind of reflecting about why it matters to you and, and sort of more of a diary kind of approach. You're still going to use the same voice, the same, but, but now you have to explain why what you're writing about matters to everybody. So the, all those three reflections you did were, were looking inward with a kind of diary voice. Now you're using the same diary voice, but you're looking outward and you're saying this matters to everybody. And then you're giving examples from your research. You can use examples, of course, from the class. That's integration of course material. But then I ask for at least three independent sources in this. So that's where you have to do some research. Sounds good. OK. <laughs> Fine with that. We can keep this short. I forgot we're nearing the end. Hi, are you a, what's your name? J, J, J? You, are you in this class? Do you have any questions? Come, come on up, okay? Come sit here. I want to make sure everybody, uh, you're, you're good? Uh, Alex, it's, it's Alex, right? Yeah, Alex. Okay, take it just because somebody uh, here. You can just sit here, okay? Go ahead.
Uh, so I do have a question in terms of like sources. So yes. There was something I was thinking of including in just like writing about. Uh, there's a show I watched like a while back. Yes. That has like, they have like guests on that show, just like historians, philosophers and that. So I thought like maybe like quoting that show. For sure. It's great. But you're going to have to cite it in yeah, your work cited. So and make sure that the way you cite it adheres to either MLA or APA format. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Good. That's all I wanted Good to question. know. Okay. And then Jay, why don't you come up and, uh, you know, sit here and or we'll bring you a microphone. Okay. It's all right. We haven't seen you before. So uh, and then uh, I know the student back there. You have a question too, but uh, go ahead. I'm having a question regarding the last reflection only. Sure. So, like, as you have mentioned, some examples, uh, like, there are different forms, like, yes. the students have done them, some have uh, made some videos. That's right. Them. That's so right. Are we supposed to make only, like, uh, if I want to make just a writing stuff, like, uh, an essay? So that's fine, right? Absolutely. Okay. And 1,400 to 1,500 words. Okay. okay. Make sure you read that sheet, though. You see where it says assignment sheet? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, click on that because I, I just, Stephen, I just learned, and Stephen is, Stephen, are you there? Still, are you? Yes. Okay, great. So have you, you you've, uh, are you good? Do you understand it now from the assignment sheet? Yes, I understand. Okay, great. So same, Stephen's just read it. He understands. Read the assignment sheet, but in, in very brief, like the, the, the um, very short TikTok version here. Okay, it is, if you write, 1,400 to 1,500 words. That was TikTok. I think that was five seconds. <laughs> Sorry. You want the TikTok version. <laughs> but, if you, but you have a choice of medium that you can use. Uh, and like, uh, another question that sure. uh, you have uploaded some classes, uh, some lectures on the class 12 uh, column. The folder, yes. Yeah, yeah. So are we supposed to like the mail whole uh, 1400 word sheet from any one topic or like we can go through with a couple of them? You, you should be choosing one really critical topic. Okay, from, uh, from these one? From the whole semester. Okay. Now, I'm going <laughs> to, let, let me just say, you just do your best. Do your best, okay? But pick one topic based on everything that you've seen in this class this semester, in the recorded classes, because this is the first time you've become in person, right? So um, I'm not going to push you and ask you, what did you watch and what didn't you watch? Because I just don't want to have that conversation right now. Just do your best, OK? And but one thing, one thing, why does it matter to all of humanity? Why have you chosen that topic? Well, I'll ask you right now, just to help you. If you had to right now do a test, and I was the invigilator, okay, and you've got you know, 400 people sitting in the auditorium, and you're going to write your test, and the exam question, the test question comes up in front of you, and the invigilator is standing here watching you to make sure you don't cheat, and you're looking at the, and the question says, Please describe in 1,415 to 1,500 words the one topic in this course, this semester, that you think matters the most to the world. What would you start writing? Open, open, open your Word document and start writing it. Let's see. Go ahead. Open a Word. I'm, I'm going to help you start writing your final assignment. And do you, do you follow? OK. Open a Word document. OK. Good. OK, good. Great. Start now. You are, I'm watching. Start writing and explaining what do you think is the most important topic in this course this semester? And why is it so important? Start writing. Go, go for it. Start. I'm, the, I'm watching you now. This is a test. You're in the auditorium. You've got 400 other students, 
and you hate being in this place. You can't stand writing these stupid tests and quizzes in a gymnasium, but you've got to do it. Start. Student. Go. Or you will be severely punished. <laughs> you will be so severely punished, you will be embarrassed for the rest of your life. Shamed. <laughs> do, do, do you understand? We, okay, good, good, good. So let's see what you start. So what would you... What would be one topic? Have you, have you watched any of the recorded? So what's one topic that is really interesting to you? Yeah. Yes. Ah. Here you could write. I will help you. You can start. I will dictate to you the first sentence. In this assignment, I would like to write about what I think is the most important topic this semester. The role of religion in the human story. The role of religion in the human story. I would like to pose a question. What is this God? that everybody talks about. I am not a white person. I am Indian. I am Hindu. We don't believe in just one God. We believe in many gods. Why this belief in just one God? Go on. Does that make sense? There we go. There we go. Should we end? I think we're done. Alex has had his question. You have a question. Come, okay? Yeah, come up, okay? Come. Okay, come, come. Yeah, go ahead. You had your question, and then... Not regarding anything about this. And we'll said. talk privately, okay? We can talk privately after. I'll finish the class and then you and I can talk. Or is there anything you want to ask right now for all the students? Uh, well, my question was, Go ahead. do cheetahs eat humans? Do cheetahs eat humans? <laughs> oh. Well, we know animals. So because, I've, no, because I've never seen a cheetah attack and eat a human before. Because I've seen real cheetahs, I've like in a zoo and everything, and, I, and I've seen a zookeeper go inside and never attack. But I've seen also wild cheetahs eating animals. That's why I was mad. Well, uh, the answer I can give is you're talking to somebody who knows a thing or two about animals because I, I actually made a television series called Zoo Diaries. It still runs on the National Geographic Channel Discovery when I was a television producer. There's a show on television called Zoo Diaries. And if you look at it, you'll see I'm producer, executive producer. But do they producer. eat humans? What do you guys think? So I never saw at the zoo, the Toronto Zoo, where I got to know Charles the gorilla and Patsy the elephant and all the giraffes. And I don't think the zoo has a cheetah. Oh, yeah, you'll no. see. Yeah, it, wasn't a zoo. it wasn't a zoo here. It was in the States. Well, I would find that unusual. The, the story of human history, I'm afraid, is largely that humans eat the animals, not the other way around. That's been a problem. We eat too many animals. We kill them all. Maybe we should eat more carrots and things we just grow. Uh, we, we eat mostly uh, veggies. We do eat meat, but uh, since, there's, since animals are slowly starting to go, where we switch to veggies. We eat veggies mostly. Only once in a while we eat meat. Better eat lots of veggies and less meat. Because veggies don't have lives, but animals do. Absolutely.
It's a good question. Thanks. What's your name again? It's, is it, I've forgotten your name. Yeah, I just want to make sure I remember. I, how do you spell it? Thank you, Ati. Okay, everybody. Uh, Nico, Alex, Jay, Sarah, John, Stephen, you good? Anything you want to say before we conclude? You don't have to. But I look forward to seeing you in another class, or maybe in Discord or in the global classroom. Okay? So no class next week here. Look forward to your final assignments on Tuesday. If you haven't had an extension and you need one for those watching the recording, let me know ASAP. You can get one. But otherwise, please care about the quality of work that you do for next Tuesday. Do not abdicate your thinking to a machine. Please do not use AI to do the work for you. That is dangerous, dumb, and we don't want to be living in a world like that. Take care, everybody. Okay.